Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast. It's me, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. And I have with me today, I am so excited to finally share Michel Ouat with you. And you're like, wait, what is his name? He's French Canadian. So Michel, uh, Michel Ouat is by trade a corporate magician specializing in customized magic for his clients around the world. He also gives memory workshops again, around the globe. (laughs) So imagine if you could greatly improve your memory just by attending a two hour workshop. Well, I'm going to tell you, you can, and especially with Michelle, welcome to the show. Hi, Jenny. How's it going? I'm so glad to be here. Oh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. I'm so excited because we met through BNI. So my, my BDSM crew, if they've been listening for any amount of time, they know that I'm a professional networker. I love networking and you and I met through BNI, even though we're in different countries and have different primary languages, doesn't matter. We found a way to communicate. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we, we go into BNI to make more business and we do, but we make some global uh, relation that, I mean, that's amazing. That's wow. I know. I love it. I, I mean, when I look back over 2020, cause we're recording this in, in January of 2021, when I look back over 2020, I, because of the networking I was doing, I talked to people and this is no exaggeration in seven countries outside of the U S I spoke to people in, I think it was 30 different States over the course of 2020. When I went, went back and looked, I mean, literally all over the world, thanks to, to networking and the most amazing people. And you and I, we connected from the first moment that we had our zoom one-to-one and I was just absolutely fascinated first of all by the fact that you do magic and then this memory workshop which we've talked about it but I don't know your process on it so I'm hoping we can begin to um, explore that a little bit to share why it is that people want to do it but let's start with first of all how'd you get into magic and why memory (laughs) Perfect. Yeah, and, and the two are connected. So I started magic um, through a, you know what, you talked about 2020 right now, and a lot of things opened uh, because of the pandemic. And of course, the pandemic, uh, sorry for the loss of everyone, of course, uh, we, we know mm-hmm. what happened there and what's still happening, but it opened our eyes to the world. Uh, so sometimes through a tragic moment, we, uh, we see something that we haven't seen before. And that's exactly what happened for me 26 years ago. My parents, well, my parents both died in uh, 27 years ago, uh, four months apart. Mm. And uh, I, I, at the time, I thought that to be a magician, it was a gift. I really thought, uh, and dumb me, but I really thought that uh, it was real magic. And I remember I, I saw a magician not long time ago after my parents uh, died. And uh, I saw the, the first magician and I said, wow, that's amazing. Not, not because of the trick, but I took a step back when I wa- while I was looking at him. And I realized that I haven't been watching him for 10 minutes. And I did not think of my parents once during that 10 minutes. And it was the first time that my, my mind was relieved of, of thinking about, about them. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the, all the other people around him. And I said, I don't know those people. They, they have their problems too. And no one right now is thinking of their problem. And I said, that's my goal in life. Well, not in life, but career wise. I said, I want, I will become a magician. And the next day I bought my first magic book and funny story, not funny story, story (laughs) is that 
Um, my, the first magic book I bought was Mark Wilson's Course in Magic. Many of uh, most people don't know who Mark Wilson uh, is, but Mark Wilson passed away yesterday. <gasps> so it's funny how we're talking about that right now. He, mm. uh, and I mean, he's like 90 something, but it, if it was not that first magic book, because that magic book is so incredible for all interested in magic, Ma Mark Wilson's Force in Magic, and he just passed uh, yesterday. So mm. uh, that's how I started magic. And then I started doing um, a cl a close up magic stage shows for corporate field and so on. And about 18 years ago, uh, Le Cirque du Soleil was hiring me four, five, six, seven times a year to do their corporate gigs and to, to all those, the, the, their sponsors, I was doing magic to their sponsors. So I, I was not a clown. I was not an acrobat. I was not doing magic in the tent where they have their shows, but all their private events, um, I was hired to do those. And, uh, and that's, you'll see the segue that how I started uh, memory. I remember once I was on a, uh, on a golf course, I was doing magic on a golf course. I was, uh, on one of the holes and you see all the foursome go by. So I do magic to four people at a time, every three, four or five minutes. And um, at one point, I remember a guy who went, uh, who stepped out of the, of the cart and he said, um, he came to me and I said, wow, he looks like my brother. He looks so much like my brother. And my brother's name is Jocelyn. Jocelyn. And I know again, like Michelle, for you guys, Jocelyn is a woman's name. But here, <laughs> It's a man's name, so very manly. But anyway, so I, I asked his name. His name is Justin. So he looks like my brother, and he has the same name as my brother, and Justin is not a common name here. So my brain went like, Z -Z -Z wow. But I kept it for myself. I had, so a year after that, Le Cirque du Soleil hires me again for the same golf tournament, same city. And uh, I see that guy coming towards me. He has his driver and tea and ball in hand. I go to him and I say, hi, Jocelyn. And he was like, oh, his jaw dropped. He also dropped his, his tea, his ball, and his golf course. Uh, sorry, his golf uh, uh, club. Club, here we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sorry for my English, by the way, but sorry for my face, but that I cannot do anything about that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he dropped everything and he said, whoa you remember me yes i do you remember my name <laughs> of course and then he said do you remember everybody's name and me being cocky i said of course and, and then later that same day i did magic after the golf tournament uh, magic at the cocktail party and he stood on a stool and he said, sorry, everybody, sorry to disturb you, but I just want to let you know that Michelle's magic is amazing, but there is something that is way more amazing than his magic. He remember everybody's name. And I said like, oh, oh, what, what have I done? And I, I stood on the same stool and I said, uh, yeah, actually I do. Uh, and that was my finale for my, my show today. But since Jocelyn uh, just told you what my finale is, I won't call you by your name today, so I'll stick with magic. And then I went from there, and I thought to myself, when I came back home, I said, um, now, when, when he said to everyone that I knew everybody's name, everybody went, what? They were amazed, and they were more amazed than the magic. Then I said, if I could do that, that would be, I mean, magic would still need to be good, but my magic would be here. And my, 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 the, the fact that I remember people's name would be way, way higher. And uh, so um, I started working 17 years ago on the process. I read many things, many things I did not like. Uh, and then I finally found something that um, now I'm sticking to it. I've been using it for many years. And I can remember 80, 80 names if I ask you. If I'm at a cocktail party right now, I re will remember 80 names. Uh, tomorrow, I will still remember the name. If you give me a list of 100 objects, I will remember the 100 objects uh, in two hours, five hours, 10 days if I, if I want to. And, I, uh, and then two years ago, I said, why am I keeping that to myself? Mm. Memory is way more than 
remembering your grocery list is way more than remembering your to-do list or your, 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 I don't know, your husband's phone number or whatever. It's way more than that. It's, I mean, the memory, your, your memory is the basis of every relation. And what I say is, um, imagine you've got a daughter, you've got kids, you put them to sleep, you go to sleep. And then in the middle of the night, you lose hundred percent of your memory. The day after your daughter goes in your bed, she's excited to see you. You wake up, you look at her and you don't remember who that person is because you lost your memory during the night can you imagine the feeling you have no clue who that person is so memory is way more than just remembering your day-to-day -day things it's uh, it's the basis of all relation and that's why it is hard when you see someone who has alzheimer that's why it's hard because you see that that person does not remember you you've been So, I mean, you've known that person for 35, 40 years, 50 years, and they don't remember you or anything you've done together. So, yeah, that's, um, and you know what Alzheimer is, I mean, everybody's putting their, their, their lives into their cell phones. And uh, if you invite me to your place, you will just send me a link of your address. I click on it. I don't need to be present. My um, Facebook even remember it reminds me of my souvenirs. I don't even need to remember my souvenirs because Facebook tells you and so on. So um, it is tragic. It is tragic because people are losing their memory younger, younger and faster than before. And you've got to control. You've got to control over that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that, yeah. I absolutely love this. And I, I've got to back you up on that because one of the things that I have learned about myself through networking is my, I don't know if you ever watched the David Letterman show back in the eighties yeah. and nineties. Right. And he had a bit on his show called stupid human tricks, of course, right. Yeah. The stupid human tricks. Right. And so I regularly tell people my stupid human trick is I can almost always remember where I met you. I'm very good at remembering names, very good at remembering face, not just faces, but, but people's names. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm better than most. And, and it's that same thing that you were describing for, uh, Jocelyn on the, on the golf course, you know, I'll walk up to somebody and be like, Hey, Jody, so great to see you again. And they're like, you know, my name, like, who are you? I remember like they, and I can always see, they remember my face, but they don't remember my name. And so that's why I always have a name tag on at, at events because I realize I'm, <laughs> I'm the oddball in being the person who can remember those things. But what it does is it does connect people to me much more quickly. Yep. And, and it's not that I do any of this on purpose. It's just become you have it a part of who I am. And it's something that I've utilized over time. Um, I think for me personally, it came from the fact that I grew up in the air force and we moved every two to three years. And we oftentimes would end up at an air force base with someone who we had been also at another air force base a number of years before. And so that going, Oh, wait, we live together at at Omaha wow. or in Minot or at Grissom or at Pete, like, you know, we have this association. And so, because I knew that I might see people again, those names stuck in my head and their faces stuck in my head. And I have those memories associated wow. with it. And, you know, I don't know if I use the same process. Heck, I don't, I don't even think about it. It just happens. You, you probably don't even use a process. It's just there. Oh, okay. It's just there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, And it's, I mean, and you're probably very good with names and maybe very poor with birthdays, let's say. Yeah. Uh, so, and me, it's the same thing. I'm very bad with birthdays. Thank God for Facebook on this one. Uh, <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Uh, by the way, um, I understand why you're wearing a name tag because you want people to feel comfortable. Uh, yeah. But if you want people to remember your name, take off the name tag. Mm. because then the brain becomes lazy because True. all it needs to do is boop, look down and we have your name. Yep. So the brain becomes lazy. So whenever I do a, a, a cocktail party, a close up magic and people are wearing name tags, I don't remember their names. So I try not to look at them. Gotcha. So oh my gosh. 
Yep. There you go. So, so we, we've basically addressed then the importance of, you know, why we should be utilizing memory at, at least because everyone who's listening to this, my BDSM crew, they're in the business of people. So remembering the people that you meet, mm. um, is going to help connect you to them. So if there are people out there who are starting to go, okay, yes, I want to know other people's names. I want to have a better memory. So that way I'm not, you know, feeling disconnected, lost all the time. What are some easy, simple things? Cause I don't want you to give away the whole workshop right now, we, you know, but some easy, simple tricks that people can start utilizing now that will help when they get to your workshop pick up on your material faster. So what's a, what's a first step in, in getting a better memory? All right. The first step, the first, the very first step is to be present. Mm. Um, this, the, we have so many things going on in our heads. We have so many, um, I mean, information is everywhere. We're always accessible and so on. So to be present is a first step. Most of the time when someone is talking to you, uh, the person is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she's listening and she's looking at her cell phone. She's listening to uh, she's thinking about something. So to stop your brain when I'm talking to you, Jenny, I'm talking to you when I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. So my shoulders are towards you. My feet are towards you. I'm not like that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm not like my shoulders are, are are disconnected from you. So this is the first thing to do. If you want to remember people's names, the second step would be to say it out loud at least two times. Mm -hmm. uh, so and so let's see. Let's say I meet you for the first time in person, and let's say we are allowed to touch one another because now we just can't because of COVID. So my shoulders and feet are towards you. I'm. Everyone that's beside us is not important for now. They will be in a moment. I give, I give you a handshake and I look at you straight in the eye and you tell me your name mm -hmm. and I say, Jenny. So I'm saying your name right after you, Jenny. As Did I hear it well? Jenny, yeah. Nice to meet you, Jenny. And what business are you in, Jenny? And then I, I don't want to overdo it. Or then you you look like someone who's selling a, a, a used car. Hey, Jenny, let me tell you this. Jenny, 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 here. Jenny. Nah, th this is way too much. So yeah. Jenny, right? Okay, nice to meet you, Jenny. Blah, blah, blah. So now twice. If I can do it three, if I can say three times, locked. It is locked. So that's it. And then I turn the other people. And now for a brief moment, you are not important anymore because now my shoulders and my feet are towards Mark and mm -hmm. Mark again, registered, registered. But most of people are shaking, are giving a handshake and they're going, hi, or they're looking at the wine glass that is that they want to drink in a moment. And they're not looking, they're not present to the person right in front of them. Mm -hmm. So how can you remember them if you're not looking at them? The more, the more senses you will, that will be um, uh, solicited, yeah, used, yeah. utilized. Yeah, used. The, the more sense that you will use do, during the, 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 the one second, uh, the more chance you have of remembering the person. Yeah. Uh, so if, if I see you, I touch you, I listen to you, I talk to you, I will not taste you, but no. <laughs> may, maybe, maybe I will be able to smell you. Right. So, I was just, I was just going to say that because I agree with you at most networking events pre COVID people are focused on quantity of connection rather than quality of connection. And that is why they, they end up with not remembering who they met. Exactly. They'll, they'll be like, I, I, I met like, I met like 25 people at the one hour event. Oh, well, the, duh. First of all, that's your first You're that's your first problem. If first you're mistake. networking, at, if you're networking at a one or two hour event and you're meeting 25, 30, 50 people, that is not beneficial because then it's all about you. What is beneficial is when you're making, I would rather go to a two hour event and have five great conversations Oh yeah, and really get to know somebody and be like, I feel like we should Keep connect. this connection going. Can we go out to coffee sometime? Can we go to lunch? Can we have a Zoom conversation, right? 
totally agree. I've got another workshop. It's on networking. And um, yeah, and I say, do you have goals when you go to a networking event? Because most people say, all right, I'm going to bring business cards. And they have a stack of them. And here we go. They basically yep. like. Like a, like a poker dealer. dealer. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I bring between five and seven business cards and I usually come back home between four and six. And I've got always, always the same three goals. One, I want to connect with one person that will be able to connect to do business with. Second, I want from those people I meet, I want to give a referral to someone in my BNI. And I want to invite someone in that group to my BNI. These are my three goals. If the same person I can have the three goals with, I'm out of there. <laughs> I'm out of there. I don't need to be there anymore. My family needs me more than they need me. And I will leave. And I'm not there to have free lunch or free wine. Uh, you know, at those work, uh, networking events, there's always, I call that a, um, I don't know if it's a good word in, in English, a, a networking gluten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you always see one of them. So if you go back home and you're not hungry, you are the networking gluten. <laughs> well, in English, we say glutton, right? Oh, glutton. Yeah. Yeah. Glutton, glutton. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's the same thing. Right. So if, if you were sitting, if, if you went to a networking event and you were eating and drinking and not networking <laughs> again, there, there's one of your problems with that. So I think this whole piece of attention being present is, is a big deal. Cause you, you did bring up the fact that we're on the phone and we're not focused on the person in front of us. And I think that's one of the big differences between when I go out and network mm -hmm. and the next time I see someone at an event that they feel more connected to me. It's amazing how quick, because they feel like I actually paid attention to them because I am, I realize one of my issues is ADD. And so I hyper focus on the person that I'm wow. with because I want to make sure that I'm not letting all the other distractions. So I'm, I'm intentionally doing my best to tune out what's going on. Yeah. I have my phone on silent assuming that my kids are okay, hanging out with their dad or grandma or whatever. Um, but I've got my phone silenced so I can focus on people. I don't want to be checking. I don't want to be that person checking my phone at an event. I don't want to be that person. I went to an event <sighs> to meet people to connect. And so that's where I think the beginning pieces is just the mindset yep. of knowing what you're there for and, and looking for the quality of connection mm -hmm. rather than the quantity Definitely. of connection. My, my phone, I don't even put it on, on silent mode. I leave it in the car Ooh. because it's so easy. It's so easy. You've got like, we, and when you're one minute alone, you feel like you're, you're rejected. Or, so it's so easy to go like this and pretend so now it's so easy. So to make sure I don't go on it, because you never know what, what the other person will be. Maybe someone was, was coming towards you and they, they saw you pick up the phone and they're turning around. Yeah. So my, I take it, leave it in the car. And my, one of my goals, by the way, is to come back before the first period has ended in a hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, you know, for, for Americans, if you don't have a hockey team where you are, that means he's spending what, maybe 15, 30 minutes at an event, you know, plus the drive home. But yeah. luckily with all of our networking events happening on zoom right now, you know, you can have a couple of great connections and then go grab your beer and watch the hockey game with your kiddo. Yeah, you right. You I go. love it. So these tips, they start with being present, making sure that you repeat their name a couple of times. And I, I realize now that's what I'm doing. Cause I'm doing the same thing because I, I also have an auditory processing disorder. So I want to make sure that I heard their name properly. Um, it, it's not that there's anything wrong with my hearing. It's just, my brain doesn't always connect to my ears the right yeah. way. Right. So I, I, I want to make sure that I am saying the name properly. I'm making sure, you know, Oh, how do you spell that? So then I also have the visual that's thing perfect. in my head, because I know with my name being Jenny, J-E-N-N-I-E, which is not 
the normal way to spell Jenny. Most people mm-hmm. spell it with a Y. So then I'm also letting people know, you know, oh, I'm Jenny with an IE. And they go, oh, oh, okay. So that also helps people remember my name a little bit better, yeah. right? So that's the visual piece. And then you also said utilizing the different senses. And I would highly recommend if you can associate a scent with a person, even if you can't smell it in the moment, be like, Ooh, this person reminds me of strawberries. So like your brain, you know what that, you know, what strawberries smell like. So when you meet them again, you're going to be like, Ooh, strawberries or whatever, like mnemonics. Yeah. I mean, it's different kind of mnemonics. I use mnemonics to remember people's name or to make association uh, with people. You know what? By by working your short term memory, you are also working on mid and long term. So um, at first, I needed to do mnemonics for everyone, everybody, all the time. Now, you just tell me your name, and in five hours, if I see you, hi Jenny, hi Mark, hi whatever. And honestly, when I do a show right now, uh, well, not right now because it's on Zoom. But when I do a a show, I will do some close up magic during cocktail. Then they will have dinner for two and a half hours. Then I will start my show. And the last piece I do, let's say there's 70 people. I say for the last piece, last act uh, tonight, it's for all of you. It's for you, Jenny. It's for you, Mark. For you, Holly. For you, Virginia. And I will start naming everyone. So imagine some, some would say, wow, yeah, but that's, that's very long and boring. No, it's not boring. Because the first name, okay, yeah, it's not going to say everyone. Second name, and I said, te- okay, now, no, no, will you remember me? And of course, I will remember you. So, and then you say the name, and then I, I usually say something like, I don't remember your name, sir. And it's funny because usually it would be the CEO, and it's the last name I say, of course. So, <laughs> you remember everybody's name. So, what do you think? What magic trick do you think people are talking about the most after your 30 minute show? It's not the fact that you made, I don't know, their wallet disappear and appear in an orange or whatever. It's the fact that you remember their name. And mm. that's the strongest magic trick you can do. Ah. Uh. I love it. And being in the people business, guys, like I said, it's all about relationship and connection. And that starts with a simple thing of knowing someone's name. And so, you know, I highly recommend, I've had the pleasure and the honor of getting to know Michelle over the last few months. And I have not yet been able to participate in this memory workshop, but I can't wait because if I've already got this decent of a memory with names, imagine what else I'll be able to accomplish (laughs) when utilizing your process. At the the, um, outcome of uh, the workshop, you would be able to, let's say your, your husband takes 20 random objects in your home and he puts them on the floor and he, he puts number one, two, three on. You, would, you, you will take the 20 objects in one minute and a half, let's say two minutes in your head. Now he puts some, a curtain on top of it, whatever. And then two hours or one day or two days after, what's number 17? Boom. What's number 13? Boom. What's number one to 10? Do, 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 do. And I do it now in my memory workshop at the beginning. People, I ask questions one one hour after they saw the objects, and they, and they remember three to four objects. Wow. And now and after they remember 48 objects out of 48. That's amazing. I think that's just phenomenal. Well, BDSM crew, I am really happy uh, because Michelle has given a very kind offer, which is he's offering $25 off of a ticket to one of his upcoming memory workshops. So what you're going to do in order to uh, get this is you are going to go to Michelle's website, which we will have listed in the show notes with an upcoming event. And we're also going to include the coupon code for the BDSM crew. So that way you guys will get the memory workshop at $25 off. Thank you so much, Michelle. That's so kind. Thank you. Always a huge pleasure for me to, 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 to see you on zoom or anywhere. Ah, well, so far it's all been on Zoom, but eventually, yeah, exactly. <laughs> eventually, I think given the fact that we're both B and I, we've had such a great connection. I think one of us is going to end up probably in the other city sometime once it's safe. And I'm fairly certain I'm going to end up in Montreal and you're probably going to end up in St. Louis because, man, we are having so much fun collaborating. Yeah. So oh, yeah. 
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing this basic starter memory information because this is this is going to make a big change for for these listeners. Thank you, Jenny, for everything you do and and BDSM crew. I'm looking forward. <coughs> Sorry, meeting you. <laughs> oh, he's getting all of a clump. <laughs> oh, and I just I, I'm 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 getting emotional. No, I just need to take some water. I don't know what happened here. Uh, it's it's this dry winter air. I think what it is. So, Michelle, yeah, thank it's not you. Not so dry, dry here. No, not so much. Oh, it's dry here in St. Louis. So, well, thank you so much, Michelle. We so appreciate your time, your comedy. Oh my gosh. I love laughing with you and sharing this information. So thank you, Jenny. Absolutely. So BDSM crew, you guys know how this goes. Make sure you uh, check the show notes, grab your phone. As long as you're not driving, grab your phone, click on the episode, scroll up, go find that link, go use that code to get into Michelle's uh, memory workshop and stay tuned because there's another badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to BadassDirectSalesMastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.